Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the podcast. Today we have on Richard Cooper from Entrepreneurs in Cars, and he is someone who helps men overcome and crush limiting beliefs and uncomfortable lives, which is lies, which is just quite fantastic. He has a new book out called The Alpha Unplugged, and this conversation was amazing. We just got real in depth, deep around just like tools, practical things that we can use, discuss, and some of Richard's story of how he actually come up and started helping men and, and other people do all of these different things. And he really believes in like taking responsibility, um, which I believe is one of the best things you can do in order to upgrade yourself, optimize your life. So it's just a fantastic podcast. Fantastic. So before we start, guys, I have some coaching available, part-time, full-time and commitment coaching, which is like a, a really cool sort of group coaching. If you're interested in overcoming yourself and becoming the best version of yourself and and trying to figure out how to do so and having like massive ah oh, like aha moments to not only upgrade yourself, but upgrade your business, upgrade your relationships, upgrade everything that's sort of like that you really focus attention on, I strongly suggest just sending me a message on that one. I also have a recipe ebook available, which I believe is like awesome. I research like every single best ingredient you could possibly have for yourself that ticks like all of the different uh, things off the, bo- uh, the box and to sort of like really make you as healthy as possible. Then I've put that into meal prep strategies, like normal recipes, really tasty recipes and like quick, easy, simple ways and how to like make something really delicious. It's all in there and you can just click some of the links below to find the recipe ebook or head to the link in my bio to have a go on that. I also have just released my training program. So I've been training in the gym for like 12 years, ended up getting a a pro card naturally, which is awesome. And I learned how to train in a gym, like in a shed. So I had to like read books and really like learn how to get connected with my body. And I teach you all of the different secrets, all the different techniques everything possible if you want to like if you're operating at like a six and a seven and you really want to bump yourself up to like a nine or a ten in terms of training and putting on muscle that is definitely the training program to go for and you can just like inbox me the word um program or or click one of the links below and you'll be able to go into you know applying and jumping into that there's also there's a whole bunch of resources in there which is really quite fantastic i also have a bone broth discount from best of the bone for you can get 12 percent off which is truly the best bone broth it's got all the essential minerals it's got all the different good high quality fats i have like two a day i believe it's i honestly believe it's so fantastic like it's really really good for your health and they cook it the old school way without any of the new stuff so it's like really really healthy and it's all local organic australian good stuff so and obviously this podcast is brought to you and is sponsored by Eternum Labs and if you head to Eternum Labs which basically Eternum's mission is to you know give people all the tools and resources so they can perform at their peak and we have like an awesome range of supplements we just released a whole bunch of new different antioxidants and some other things to really improve your sleep and your energy and your focus so if you head to eternumlabs.com.au and enter the code Corey you can get yourself 10% off so without any further ado guys I um, and I'm excited to bring you this uninterrupted podcast with Richard Cooper. I hope you like it as much as I did. And if you do like it or if you did get any value out of it, please give it a like, a share or subscribe. Just quickly head onto your story, click the link and share and be like, woo, this was good or whatever you thought of um, with the podcast. And also please subscribe as well because that really helps bring up the uh, podcast and helps the YouTube algorithm too. So thank you so much for listening, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. G'day, Richard. Thanks so much for coming on to the show. Hey, Corey. Thanks for having me, bud. Sweet. So, I mean, I've been following your content and um, for like quite a while now, and I've been re- really enjoying the messages that you share in terms of people overcoming themselves, especially men overcoming themselves in terms of financial stuff, uh, romantic stuff and relationships with women and all these different things. I think it's quite fantastic and especially how you hold like a, a, h- a high standard for guys and like um, really sort of allow men to like take charge of responsibility i'd love to talk about that yeah absolutely yeah so obviously you've you've written a book the um alpha unplugged and you've been doing all all kinds of things like that what do you think like one of the most important messages out of that book that um people are receiving well are the messages that they're receiving i would say the most important one that i'm seeing them pick up on is they're actually doing the work now like like they recognize that men must compete and um i'm i'm getting a lot of emails and dms from people that come to that awakening and you know just thanks and you know this is how my life has changed so there's a big difference between men and women you know women get to choose men must compete and um 
it's kind of a rude awakening for most guys because they've been told for quite a long time that you're good enough as you are. Just be a nice guy, uh, you know, stuff like that. And it doesn't really work out for them. Yeah, so true. And I think I'm pretty sure I read it in one of Rolo Tomasi's books when he was uh, mentioning and talking about how relationships, like for men, it's one process to end up you know, getting a girlfriend or getting like a long term partner. But it's like the, the real work on yourself starts then and it demands more of you than what it does from when mm, you um, yeah. first started picking them, <laughs> first started picking up or, or courting. Yeah, so I find that I find that quite quite interesting. What do you think recently are some of the things that you have um, really learned that you've been applying or teaching people? Um, in what area? I mean, we could talk about making money. We could talk about women. We can talk about relationships. Like, what specifically? Let's go. Um, maybe some uh, beliefs about money first, and then we'll. I think we'll get into some of the relationship stuff as we go on because that, that's some of that stuff really yeah. attracted me to um, watching some of, so some of your things and just some of your like belief systems around that thing really helped men be like, you know what? I'm going to go and make some damn money, which is um, really good. Yeah. Um, people take a interesting approach to money these days. I've, I've, it's fascinating, you know, to be honest with you, because I found that, you know, as a kid, I just, I, I just realized like, Hey, you know, I like fast cars and doing cool stuff and you need money to buy that. Nobody's going to give it to you. And, I'm not going to sulk about it. So let's go and sort it out and figure out what the solution to that problem is. Um, a little bit different today though. You know, we see a lot of guys that um, aren't prepared to do what it takes to get what it is that they want. And they default to a feminine type of response, which is more or less um, throwing a little bit of a hissy fit, you know, um, Again, uh, men are different than women. Men are designed to compete and they're expected to be able to uh, provide and preside in a family sort of metric. They have to be able to bring home the bacon because uh, somebody's got to cook it up in the house. And, you know, the interesting <laughs> thing is there's not a lot of guys that are doing that today. I mean, there's a shortage of, there's a shortage of top shelf men that women want to be with. And at the same time, there's a lot of women out there that want to have children, but they don't want to be mothers or they don't want to be wives too. Right. So it's an interesting dynamic with what's happening right now. Yeah. I think that kind of like, yeah, that crossovers to like a whole bunch of different things, especially in terms of, you know, even, even some of John Gray stuff. Like I like some of the, the stuff that's mentioned um, uh, through those things for sure. So what do you think is like for people who, because a lot of my audience and listeners are, are, are a lot of like entrepreneurs or, or people that have gotten to that stage in their life when they really want to start investing in themselves. Mm. But before spending all the cash and, and, do, and doing all these things in terms of like doing some of the inner work, what are some of the things that you would recommend or suggest them to start thinking about trying and doing? The logical answer would be read your book. but <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, read my book, The Unplugged Alpha on Amazon, shameless plug. But, um, you know, I'll say this, like, the skill that's missing the most with men is problem solving skills. Um, I've come to realize this because a lot of guys are always asking me questions like, how do I become an entrepreneur? What's a good business to get into? Um, what should I do to make a lot of money? And they're asking the wrong questions. They don't even have a business. You know, they want me to basically uh, cut out a business for them and, and plug it into their lives so they can go and do it and be successful. And that's not the way that it works. Um, having fundamental problem solving skills, I would say is the most important character trait that you've got to develop as a man today in this world, because not a lot of guys have it, you know, it's, it's, it's like common sense. Common sense has become a rare commodity as well. It's not that common anymore. Yeah. So how would you suggest someone like actually get better at problem solving? Well, the way like my generation learned when I was a kid and I'm dating myself when I'm saying, you know, my generation, obviously, but I mean, I'm 48 um, we, we learn by doing stuff with our hands and solving problems. You know, we wanted to, um, have a launch ramp to fly off with our skateboards. Well, we need to figure out how to build it and carpentry skills and how to use a saw and, and screw it all together sort of thing. Um, it started young for a lot of guys and I don't see a lot of men, you know, today doing things to solve problems in their lives, you know? Most guys today, I think if you were to like just take a random survey in a shopping plaza um, and you stop 20 guys, I bet you'd find that most of them couldn't change a tire on a car or they wouldn't know how to check the oil on a car. 
In fact, you probably find a lot of guys that are of age where they can have a driver's license probably don't even have a driver's license just because they're not bothered to be do it, you know, to go out and get one. Yeah, it's so, so interesting because um, yeah, obviously you coach a lot of people, so you you see this a lot, and you're you're actually helping people like overcome <laughs> overcome all these things, which I think is um yeah quite fantastic. Another thing that I find that um people uh, do take for granted, which they could um, focus a little more time and energy on, is like their health. And I know you do some stuff for your like health as well. What what do you do to focus on your health? <clears throat> Again, this is an obvious thing to me because I've always. Uh, taking care of my own health. I've, I've pretty much looked the same my entire life, you know, minus losing the hair and the graying. But um, I've, I've always just made a put a priority on self care, because not only do I feel good and function better, but you're also more attractive to women. I mean, guys always struggle with women. And it's funny to me, <laughs> I saw this meme the other day, somebody sent over to me, and it was something like, you know, the toy story with, you know, the big hands up in the air and he's talking in one direction and he says something to him like, imagine crying about getting dumped by your girlfriend and you can't even do 30 pushups, you know, <laughs> like, like fundamentally basic things like that, that are the basis of attraction between men and women is women want to be with a strong, masculine, virtuous guy. That, like, I'm not talking be a bodybuilder and look like Mr. Olympia, but at least, you know, be able to look competent. Like she wants to know that if there's a bad guy coming or somebody breaks in the house at night that you're probably going to be able to lunge out of bed and go downstairs and take care of it. And she'll feel comfortable with that. But most guys don't have those basic skills. I mean, one of the things I talk about in one of the chapters of my book is learn combat sports. Um, I was a bit late to this. If I'm being honest, I only started in the last few years, but I came to this realization like, okay, I'm strong. I can pick up heavy stuff. You know, my legs are good. My, you know, my upper torso can move a lot of weight. But what happens in a scenario if, if somebody tries to corner me or to hurt me or somebody that I love? Like, am I able to deal with that? And, um, you know, I came to the realization, no. So what did I do? All right, well, let's sign up for combat sports. And I got into Krav Maga and I got into boxing. And um, I feel a lot more comfortable now, you know, you know, walking around, being able to have these competency skills. Because at the end of the day, like what women want is they want a dangerous man that um, is civilized, you know? I don't yeah. know if you saw the part of my book on women's search history. No, I didn't. So, so there's a part of my book that, um, you know, I talk about women's search history. I think it was Google engineers that did this study and they found that the top searches for women on pornographic sites are usually tied around uh, pirates, billionaires, surgeons, vampires, and um, I don't know if the one was like a Wolverine or something like that. Um, <laughs> But that, but that tells you what, what women get turned on by. They don't get turned on by the Harry Potter looking guy, right? Like they get turned on by men that um, are influential, have, you know, lethality kind of built into them. But they can, you know, it's like, you know, walk around with a uh, speak softly and carry a big stick, you know, sort of story. Yeah, yeah, 100% get that. What do you think, uh, like some uh, common belief systems that men that you help men like really overcome in order to help them like gain comp uh, competence and what does like a you know a competence man in your, like, your opinion look like um it depends on who you ask and i'm going to answer the question from the female's perspective because for the most part that's what most men are motivated by right like yeah. there's really only one reason why we're on this earth we're on this earth to be born reproduce and die, you know, yeah. basically. So, you know, if you take it from the perspective of um, attraction, um, men are viewed by women as success objects, right? And that's not the end all be all. I mean, yes, you can be very wealthy, you know, you can be very wealthy and be five foot five and look like Danny DeVito um, and be awkward and quirky, but you can still do well with women. It's just, you're gonna do a lot better on the sexual marketplace with the opposite sex if you are not only successful and wealthy, but you look big and strong and competent, you have competency skills, you can solve problems. Um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a big dynamic of this puzzle called hypergamy. And I'm sure you've heard it because I heard you mention Rollo earlier. Yeah. Um, but there's the alpha seed and the beta knee part of hypergamy. And it's not just the two pieces of the puzzle. There's all these other little pieces as you kind of go down the rabbit hole and you learn, well, 
at different times of the month, women have different desires for, you know, for the opposite sex or at different phases in their life, they have different desires, you know, desires for the opposite sex. Um, where she's at when she's 25 is not going to be the same when she's 31 and she wants to cash out her chips and settle down and find a good guy. And she's tired of the players. Right. Um, but overall women have a long list of demands for men. Um, there's been a lot of these blogs and articles. You've probably seen some of them online where it's like, you know, they make a joke out of it. Like women have this like list of 237 <laughs> different things they expect of men. He's got to be tall. He's got to be funny. He's got to have hair. He's got to be a good father. He's got to be alpha. He's got to be beta. He's got to be able to fix shit. He's got to, da, 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 da. it's like, <laughs> you know, you keep going all the way down the list and it's like, you know, you start to realize that there's a lot of demands that are made on men. And, um, you know, if you've got your act together, you're in a pretty good position to be spoiled for choice when it comes to being a sexual selector in a relationship. Yeah, and I think it's really tough for guys to actually, you know, tr truly get their act together because it, it takes a certain while. And then like by the time someone's in their mid 20s, early 30s is when, you know, they thought they should have had their act together earlier and they get to this sort of point they're like, oh man, I ain't got my act together. Like, yeah, I, you know, I, I gotta really get it. It really depends on the guy. You yeah, know? true. Some guys come to the realization early on. Some guys do it later on in life. Some guys never really need to come to the realization at all because they're just natural alphas. Yeah. Um, you're in Australia, so you know you could look up Corey Worthington, and you know you're probably familiar with that story because Rolla mentioned that in his first book. But yeah, yeah, like you've got your alpha Buddhas, like your natural alphas that just women are. Just <laughs> they just like suck women into like their gravitational force, yeah. and they have a hard time getting rid of them. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of different dynamics when it comes to attraction with men and women. Yeah. And how did you get into this, man? Like, what, what was your journey in sort of diving into this stuff? Cause you give a lot of yeah. really good content back to people to try to help them overcome stuff and yeah, really help them crush some limiting beliefs and, and take responsibility, which is what like, you know, attracted me to. Yeah, I was, stuff. um, so, I mean, what you're basically asking me is how did I get red pills? Right. And, um, <laughs> You know, for the people that are listening that don't know what that is, I'll explain it. In the movie The Matrix, there's a scene where um, uh, Morpheus offers Neo two pills. You know, one is a red pill and one's a blue pill. And the blue pill basically puts him back to sleep and plugs him back into society. And he just, you know, blissfully goes around, you know, enjoying things as they always were um, without knowing any different. Um, the red pill wakes him up from all that. So he basically unplugs from all the lies and the social conditioning and he goes down a rabbit hole and, and sees how far it actually uh, goes. So my red pilling moment really happened. Um, there was really th three things that contributed to it. One, um, there was a big shift in legislation here in a business that I was running about a decade ago, uh, which was tied into the credit card debt relief space. And I saw how bad the government really is at aligning with its virtue signaling to the public, which is usually we care about you. We're going to do the right thing for society. Uh, all they really care is about themselves and their profit margins. And it's the same thing with the banks and credit card companies. So that was a real big awakening for me. The other thing was going through the divorce machine, which I thought would just be simple and easy. You just get divorced. You just split up and you share custody and that'll be it. Um, but the reality of it was, quite, quite different. And if you want to learn more about um, that, I, there's a chapter in my book on why smart men no longer marry. Uh, I'm not saying they don't have relationships or they don't have children. Smart men don't marry. So, you know, you can dive into that in that chapter of the book. And then the third thing was um, after my divorce, I got involved with a single mommy who had a few kids and I dated her for three uh, years. And um, yeah, like just a lot of weird stuff happened during that relationship that was like the final nail in the coffin to the red pilling where it's like, okay, I came to this realization that women aren't going to love you until, you know, death do us part. And, you know, their love is conditional. And then I started hearing all these things like, well, for false law. And then, you know, there's hypergamy and then there's solipsism. And it's like, okay, all of these, all of these terms and all of these tropes started to explain everything for me. And I was able to connect the dots. So it's not like, it's not like I fell in this because I needed to get girls. I really didn't have a hard time getting women. I've always been successful. I'm tall. I'm good looking. I've got decent game. It's just, I didn't understand what was the driving force between what was a glue that kept a good relationship going. And that could be a, you know, a marriage. It could be a long-term relationship. You could be dating multiple women simultaneously, polygyny, polyamory. There's all kinds of different dynamics that you can look at, but it's all pretty consistent, right? Yeah.
No, that's crazy. And, and obviously, like you coming out with this, what sort of drive you to, to, to help other people? Because you've, you've been helping like a lot of guys. I didn't really set out to help people with this stuff. I set out when I created my YouTube channel, which I called Entrepreneurs in Cars, which really has no bearing on a lot of the conversations I have today, unless I'm driving in my car or maybe upload a, a quick video on an on-ramp with my McLaren pulling away from an NSX. Um, I kind of moved away from that. And it's just because I ran out of friends with cool cars to interview <laughs> on my YouTube channel. And I had guys that would, you know, it was early on and I didn't have a lot of subs and I would read all the comments at that time. And somebody said, you know, you should do a video on the kind of women to not date. And I'm like, okay, cool. Cause I got a lot of experience with that. And I put out some videos around that. And then somebody introduced me to the red pill and Rolo Tomasi and all that other stuff. And that just kind of took me in a, into a direction where guys just kept coming at me. Okay. Help me solve this problem. Help me solve that problem. And I started billing out my time and really, I mean, today, now when I'm dealing with people, I deal with seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and professionals. Um, cause that's really where I came from, you know, about 10, 12 years ago, I was working in that space. I was a part of EO and I helped startup entrepreneurs get their business off the ground. And I've mentored a lot of people. Um, so I'm here from the perspective of a successful businessman that is interested in helping other guys level themselves up. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm probably going to spend a little bit more time on in the future is showing guys how to make some serious money because there's, there's the dynamics of, of sex and then there's money and power. And you might be good at sex. You might be good at pulling women. You might be good at pickup artistry or, you know, whatever the go-to term is today where you just approach women, you try to get their numbers, but that's not going to last long-term unless you understand money and power. What are some lessons that is like really important to learn in terms of money and power? Accumulate wealth because yep. money is money is a big equalizer. Um, the thing that most people don't understand about money is some people have a very bad relationship with it. Um, you've probably heard, you know, money is the root of all evil. Um, the people that say that never had any or are unwilling <laughs> to do the work to acquire the wealth. But money is really just a store of value. Okay. It's not, it's not evil. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's just a store of value. And it, and it only exists because thousands of years ago, you might have been um, the guy that raised uh, chickens or grew hay. And I might've been the guy in the village. My last name's Cooper. So I would have been the barrel maker and you might have wanted to have bought, bought a barrel off me, but your hay is going to expire in a few weeks. Right, because it's going to go bad. It's a perishable item. So they had to figure out a way to store value in something. So that's why they, you know, started storing it in silver and gold and like you know precious metals, which then turned into paper money and credit, and is now moving into cryptocurrency. But all that money is is a store of value that you've created in your life. So if I've made a bunch of barrels, I'm going to acquire a certain amount of wealth, which is that store of value in silver, gold, crypto, paper money, credit, whatever it is you want to call it. But that's all that it is. Um, and when you have money, you have a lot more options in life, you know, to solve problems. I mean, you can solve your own life's problems. You can solve those for the people that you love. You can solve other people's problems. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to raise the middle finger and tell somebody to go pound sand if you don't want to deal with them. <laughs> um, it's, it's a nice place to be because it gives you a, a position of power and leverage. So it's really important. Yeah. So what do you think some of the, like the, I guess the main lessons are for people who are like, you know, oh, I've wanted to have. And I've wanted to make money and I, I want to do these things, but they've never really like dived in and started to learn like financial literacy and, and really start to try to make a business and some money. What are some of the things that you would like to say to them? Start, start by becoming a problem solver. Um, mm. I think that parents are letting their kids down by not infusing problem solving skills. Today, most parents will just give their kid a, a screen or phone and they stare at it um, for several hours a day. Like you've like, you've got to give them something to do, whether it's playing with Legos, building plastic airplane models from World War II era, you know, you got to give them something to do to solve problems. And I think if you start them early, they're going to be in a better position. Now, if you're an adult and you're like, well, right, right, okay, you know, I wasn't given that benefit. I was raised in a single parent household and um, I'm too much of a nice guy. Like, what do I do sort of thing? Well, you're an adult. I mean, you're a grown ass man, you know, hold yourself accountable and, and find ways to solve your life's problems, right? Men are deductional, you know, sorry, deductive, rational problem solvers. Figure it out, right? I don't, I don't prescribe do A, B, C, D, E. What I do is I kind of paint out a, uh, a map and I'll plot the landmines on the map and I'll give you some guidance on how to get from point A to point B. 
Yeah, no, I love that. And how do you like for yourself when when you're at a stage when you're like, cool, I want to do this business venture. I want to make this much money doing this, and I want to invest in myself and 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 go down this. Like, what do you actually do in terms of to get the ball rolling? Um, I'm I'm at the point now where so I talk about playing to win versus playing not to lose in life. When you're a young man, if you're in your 20s and your early 30s, you should be playing to win in life, which means you're taking on bigger risks, which should have greater rewards and bigger payoffs. There's going to be some mistakes made along the way. Some of them might be costly, but you just pick yourself back up. You're not going to be hurt. You got a lot of runway in front of you. You know, you've got a lot more time, right? At some point, I feel like you need to pivot that because you've made it and you're playing a little bit more on the defense. I'm not saying that you're on full defense at all, but you're playing not to lose at that point, you know, where you want to protect your, um, you know, like the foundation of your wealth, not take on big, silly risks that you may have previously, you're going to say no to a lot of stuff just because you don't need to do it, or you don't want to expose yourself to the risk, or it's not a good use of your time. So, so there's really that part of the equation to consider as well when you're looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. So, super interesting. I, I love that. That's a real good message. So how do you specifically, like, well, I'm really, really interest in, interested into your inputs. Like what do you actually do and research and like learn to like, like stay on top of all this stuff and stay um, like ahead of the game? Um, well, it really depends on what matters to me at that time. Like Right now on my channel, I'm not putting out a lot of content. I do a regular show on Monday night, which is a live stream um, called The Unplugged Alpha, which is based on the title of the book. So I'm not going to change that. But um, right now, one of the things that interests me the most actually is um, figuring out an exit strategy from, from Canada because I see the place going basically spiraling down the uh, um, drain pipe. You know, Canada's basically on the decline. That's one of the things that I spent a lot of time uh, contemplating and where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do and how I'm going to minimize the tax liabilities. And the other thing is I don't get the greatest sleep a lot lately. So I've been fastidious about trying different things. that's going to improve my sleep patterns. Um, so again, you know, to the point, like it really depends on what it is that's important to me at that time. But again, I've, I've done the work, I've made the money. I've, I've got, you know, successful businesses behind me. I've put people in charge of them. Um, my thing right now is really focusing on the stuff that matters more to me. And that's what I'm really doing. Yeah, for sure. And I saw you got like a cheeky, I'm pretty sure that was a cheeky aura ring on your, on, on yeah. your finger. <laughs> yeah. yep. I think they're like a really useful tool. Um, so tell us about a time where you've been coaching someone or going through something and you've really hopes, helped someone overcome something in their life and actually like, um, get some results. I'd love to hear about some uh, story of someone who... You know what? It's really tough to unplug men from their comforting lies. It's very, very difficult. Um, there's that old crabs in the bucket story where it's like, you know, you, you try to climb out and there's always something trying to grab you back and pull you back into the bottom of the bucket. Um, for most guys, I mean, if I'm doing it one-on-one, -on -one, it's, not, it's not somebody physically doing it or it's not a family member or a friend that's trying to stop them from leveling up. It's more or less their own belief system. And you can always tell what somebody's belief system looks like by looking at the results that they get out of life. So let's use the example of the guy that's heartbroken over his girl. He finds out that she's getting bagged by Chad, um, you know, behind his back and he's very upset about it. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the situation. Like, you know, who are you? What do you do for a living? What does your self care look like? How tall are you? What do you weigh? What does your style look like? And it's like, you know, you got to understand that women will always choose the best guy that they can get. That's what hypergamy really boils down to is, is this guy the best that I can do? And if you're not, and she could do better, then why are you upset? Right? I mean, guys that get bent out of shape, because of the smallest thing, like one of the most interesting ones that fascinates the hell out of me that I've seen a lot lately is there's a lot of guys that will um, throw money at only fans girls. Okay. And, you know, OnlyFans is basically um, a nude site for private pictures that they can share to their audience, from what I understand. And, you know, they'll, you know, they'll go and subscribe and pay their $10 or $20 a month or whatever it is that they contribute to the pot of gold that these women end up accumulating. And then they get upset. They get pissed off that they have a boyfriend. 
And they actually have this belief that if they throw enough money or give enough free attention away to these women that are selling pictures of their butthole on OnlyFans, um, at some point they're going to reciprocate and want to fall in love with them. And it's, and it's like, you know, this is just a basic broken belief, you know, um, you being a nice guy and telling her she's pretty and being the shoulder to cry on and subscribing to her OnlyFans and giving her 10 or $20 a month does not automatically turn her into somebody that's going to be romantically interested in you as a guy. Right. Um, so that's just like a basic example of, of, of how these belief systems work. And normally, you know, when you look at the results of them, because, you know, we're talking about beliefs and results, because it really comes from the bottom up, it's beliefs, choices, and then results. Beliefs are basically the operating system that govern the choices that we make at every single day. And then the results come from the choices that we make. So if you have this guy that's throwing money at an OnlyFans girl for her butthole pictures, and he's living in his mom's basement at 30 years old with a neck beard, and he's 150 pounds overweight, working at the local Walmart as a greeter, making you know minimum wage. Uh, okay, well, we've got some broken beliefs there, because you actually thought that throwing money at this girl was going to make her want to reciprocate and want to be with you for what you were doing, right? So that's a bit of an extreme example. I mean, obviously, I don't deal with that sort of conversation when it comes to one-on-one -on -one coaching, but that's just a basic example just to give you and your audience a basic idea of it. Yeah, hundred percent. And so how did, how would you really, cause you said, you mentioned it's really difficult to help men like overcome like their limiting beliefs. What sort do you, well, they have of ego investments in them. That's why, right? Yep. Like if, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, if you've been alive for 30 years and you've always believed that if you're just a nice guy, girls will like you. And then a guy like me comes along and says, okay, well, women are hypergamous. So they always, you know, are going to select the best option they have to choose from and you don't happen to be that, it's like, you know, you see the blood boiling and the veins popping out of their forehead sort of thing because they have a hard time, you know, computing it. So you literally have to update their beliefs and remove a broken belief that they have and provide a new updated belief that serves them. The problem is, is like people don't want to change. They like to lean on what they're comfortable with and change is uncomfortable. It's different. It requires often, you know, for a lot of guys, it requires something that looks like work, you know, it's stress and overalls and it looks like work and that's hard for them because they don't like to do that. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of components that are tied into that. Yeah. How, how would you, do you have any like methods or systems or sort of questions about how you would help someone actually unlock, unlock that and get over it? Yeah. I usually, I usually start asking them questions about, you know, why they, you know, believe certain things. So why do you think that's true? You know, like, why do you think that that would serve you? Like, why would that work? You know, sort of thing. And then you offer them an alternate, you know, reality, which I think it's easier with guys. Like my preference is dealing with guys because they're more logical and rational. So I can say, look, you know, this is a broken belief. It clearly doesn't serve you. I mean, you ask some questions like, well, how's that working out for you? Well, it's not, it's not, it's clearly not working because I'm talking to you today, Rich. Okay. Well, so we both agree that that's a broken belief, right? Well, what about this one over here? What about option B? Because option B connects to these types of results. So can we adopt option B as a new belief, you know, to view, to use that as a lens in which to view that problem with, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I get, I get what you're saying. And like, I'd love to, what, what was like your experience with overcoming like your own beliefs? Did you, ha did you have to, did it like, ha how did you start figuring them out? Was there certain things you read or? Um... Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm big on having great mentors and coaches. Yeah. Um, I don't think that people respect and value great mentors and coaches as much as they should. And by the same token, they're, they're, they're kind of rare and really hard to find. I've been fortunate because I've been um, tied into certain communities and organizations that um, really vet the people that they allow to speak on certain subjects as an expert. And I had this one guy, um, we were doing this uh, retreat and, you know, I'll just tell you the story, you know, basically the way that he broke it down was you're basically living with a retarded dog in your house. He said, you know, he said, you know, you'll go out in the yard or you maybe do something and come back, you know, 15 minutes later and the retarded dog has gone into the fridge. It's eaten the margarine. It's made a mess all over the place, shit all over your floor. And you're, and, and you continue to tolerate it. Right. And you've got a choice at that point. I mean, if the dog, like you recognize the dog is retarded, you can put it down. You can put it out to pasture, give it to a guy that's got a farm and some land and it can run around and chase, you know, other retarded animals sort of thing. But 
you have to end up surrendering to the fact that that's what it is, right? Um, it's an interesting conversation, you know, when you start to kind of like dive into these topics when it comes to how it affects you in business and entrepreneurship. It's a lot of fun, really. It's one of the things that I still enjoy the most. Yeah, well, I'd love to get to actually get into that in terms of business and, and entrepreneurship. Is there like a continue on for the uh, conversation in, in terms of that? Um, okay, so what is it that you want to cover with that? So well, just, just as you just have a little more frame. Yep, sure. Um, so just as you mentioning, like using that, that certain model of using the, 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 the retarded dog in the house, and then you said mm. having conversations, you know, with um, entrepreneurship and, and, and business, I'm using that as like a sort of analogy. I'd just like to dig into that a little bit further of how it actually relates to business and entrepreneurship and how you can, I guess, bring that up or apply it, improve it. Yeah. I, okay. So I think if you can get really, really good at distilling complex things down to simple terms, people get them a lot quicker and can apply them in their lives and get better results faster. Um, another one that, you know, we would hear often would, would be, um, you're like a racehorse giving pony rides. Okay. And that, and that makes sense because a racehorse is designed to like bolt at full speed and win races and, you know, do great and wonderful things in front of an audience of people clapping their hands and they're worth a lot of money, you know, to breed them is, is a uh, very, very profitable business. I have a friend that breeds racehorses. Um, but if you're a racehorse giving, giving pony rides, you're not living up to your potential. And when you kind of distill these concepts down to, to people and you're talking about it, you know, in the frame of their business, it's like, why are you basically messing around with these basic ass ideas? You're essentially behaving like a racehorse giving pony rides, right? It's like, okay, well, what, what is a better use of your time? You know, what is a greater ROI of the time that you want to invest in that component of the business or the thing that it is you want to solve? Um, anybody can make anything complex, which is what most people do. Simplifying things is a beautiful uh, process. It's actually quite difficult for most people to do. Steve Jobs was great at it. You know, he you know he would simplify electronics into beautifully made, uh, you know, nicely designed concepts that that would just work, right? Um, it's a lot of fun when you get it right. Yeah, yeah, and I love that too, especially how you mentioned, you know. Um, using that analogy of a race was giving pony rides in terms of the business and using like different ideas and being out of. Yeah. I guarantee there's people out there listening to this right now that are thinking I'm a racehorse giving pony rides. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you're a weapon, then behave like a weapon, you know, like why are you selling yourself short? Well, because it pays the bill and my girlfriend's not working right now and she's in this school or we just had that. And it's like, okay, you know, men love to complicate their lives and justify why. So do you want to keep doing that or do you want to affect change in your life? Because let me remind you guys that they're listening to this. You're all going to die. You, you, like your time on this earth is limited. So how do you want to use it? Yeah. And I think also like in, in terms of that as well, it's having the uncomfortable conversation with yourself and then with other people as well. Because I think that like, you know, so some of my, like my personal experiences and stuff has actually been like, like if something goes on for a certain period of time, of being like, no, I need to have this conversation now or I need to have this conversation with myself to actually make a decision uh, to choose something because it's comfortable staying somewhere if, you, if you're used to something. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, straight up. Well, Richard, I'll um, thank you so much for coming on to the show, man. And yeah, you're just welcome. Like Thanks to, for having me. Yeah, no, all good. I'd just like to um, quickly, before we, have, um, before we end the show, is where can people find you? Um, if you want to find my videos go to youtube and search for entrepreneurs and cars uh if you want to read my book which is a great starting place to kind of get your head wrapped around a lot of the concepts that i unplug men from um it's a good book for women too by the way it's not just for men but just go to amazon and search for the unplugged alpha or just search for my name richard cooper and you'll find it it's available on kindle audible and uh print yep thanks for that and if you and also all richard's stuff will be linked in the description below and also before we leave if there is any words that you would like to um, encourage people who, you know, especially men who are ready to like start, um, you know, optimizing themselves and take themselves to the next level. If you want to leave them with any quotes or like any strong questions, I would definitely be appreciative of that. I think the quote that I'm known the most for is three words, do the work. Yeah, I love it. Well, yeah. everyone is listening, <laughs> do the work, <laughs> have a look at this good stuff. Thanks, Corey.